everybody, welcome to After Prison Show. And in this video, we are definitely gonna be talking about prison fitness. I'm gonna be telling you guys a crazy story in relation to prison fitness because I did say we are gonna get back to telling some prison stories here on After Prison Show. And also with that, add to the fact that I myself have been trying to get back in shape. I've been talking about this, I've kind of been preaching it here on After Prison Show, and I want you guys to be a part of me trying to get myself back in shape. Maybe it motivates you as well out there to start working out, to start feeling better about yourself as well. I wanna feel better about myself, and I hope all of you out there wanna feel better about yourselves as well. Before we go any further, I do wanna mention one thing real quick. This right here, this fucking hydroxy cut, this shit that I ordered from Amazon, thinking that this was gonna be something that actually helped me lose weight, feel better, have all of this mental focus, or whatever the hell this shit says, advanced scientifically tested weight loss. I took one of these pills yesterday. As a matter of fact, I did it in yesterday's video. You guys saw me take that pill. I took that pill at one o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. I didn't get any sleep last night whatsoever. This, whatever the hell is in this shit, this is no good. This is going in the trash. I want to thank everybody as well who commented on yesterday's video telling me just how bad hydroxycut really is. I had no fucking idea this stuff was as bad as it is. Matter of fact, people were actually tweeting to me today showing me FDA recalls of this right here. If there is an FDA recall on this, why are they still selling this? It doesn't make any sense to me at all. But anyways, moving on from that, the hydroxy cut, that's done, and I don't want any more parts of it whatsoever. What we do have, however, sitting here in front of me, uh, me and Cody just went to the grocery store this morning, and a lot of people were suggesting things that I need to start incorporating into my diet with my workout. So everything that we have here is actually like super, super healthy stuff. Lots of fruits. We've got some mixed nuts right here. Some tuna fish, tons of tuna fish, because that's going to be a big part of this. Some non-fat Greek yogurt, just plain white yogurt right here. This is probably going to be not that good at all. Some milk, some eggs, and a lot of this right here I'm going to be using in smoothies because that's going to be another thing that I'm doing. Eating better, drinking really healthy smoothies, eating eggs. I've got my lunch right here. Check this out. I know I mentioned yesterday that I was on a 30-day salad diet. This salad right here actually weighs two and a half pounds. A two and a half pound salad. But I do have to say that maybe doing a 30-day strictly salad diet is probably not the most healthy idea. So again, hence the fact of why we have all of these things sitting on the table because this is about to be part of my prison fitness diet. And there is one last thing that I wanna show you guys real quick before we continue. While at the grocery store, I was looking for not only tuna, but also salmon as well. And I'll be damned if I didn't find that salmon just like the way they used to sell it while I was in prison. In a pouch. Fish in a bag, folks. You know, a lot of what you will buy off of commissary while locked up, whether it's your refried beans, your chili beans, your tunas, your salmons, meatballs, chicken, it's all gonna come in a bag. You ever ate fish out of a bag before? So because fitness is the topic as of late here on After Prison Show, we're gonna stick with that. And what I'm about to tell you now is completely in relation to prison fitness with some things that you may not know and adding to that a few crazy prison fitness stories. It probably doesn't take much to imagine that while in prison, fitness is a huge part of probably like 90% of prisoners who are locked up. And there is a multitude of reasons for this. One being, what else are you really going to do? You're locked up. So working out is not only something that's going to benefit you, getting you in shape, getting you big, getting you ready to be back in the streets, meeting all those girls that you'll be fantasizing about while locked up. Man, I'm telling you, punk tattoo guy, I really can't wait to go home and have sex with 1,000 girls. Oh, Joe, quit playing. You know that's never going to happen. Me and you, we're soulmates. What the fuck did you just say? But working out is also a really good way to pass the time and to help you not even think about the fact uh, that you are doing time. It's a great way to relieve stress, whether you're thinking about that girl on the outside who's just not answering the phone or responding to any of your letters. Jody, why? Yeah, and Jody being that guy who probably has every guy who's locked up's girl while they're on the inside. But with working out, getting in shape, and trying to be healthy in prison, with all of those things being great things to do while serving time, doing so isn't always the easiest thing to do. They don't exactly feed you all that well while locked up. So trying to have like a balanced and nutritional diet 
Well, that's almost pretty much out of the question. And making that even more difficult is if you don't have any money and aren't able to go to commissary. Because from commissary, there are a few things that prisoners can buy that can help them as they're trying to bulk up, get into shape, whatever the case may be. There are some things that prisoners are able to buy from either jail commissary or prison commissary, such as peanut butter, oatmeal, fish pouches, just like I showed you a little while ago, beans, peanuts, and even though some of these items may be heavy in fat, well, fat in prison really isn't something that you worry about at all. Because you're definitely not going to be eating enough of that stuff anyways to where the amount of fat that something may have will actually even matter. But not only is trying to eat right while locked up a really difficult thing to do, sometimes having the space or anywhere to work out or even having weights or any sort of workout equipment may actually pose its own problems as well. Some facilities I've been to rarely get wrecked. Whether prisoners are given wrecked like once or twice a week or sometimes even once every two weeks, prisoners are then forced to work out in either their cell or in the housing unit, and there can be problems that come from this as well. Nobody wants to be around a guy who's working out all day long, who stinks, he's musty, dude, you need to get in the shower, you've been sweating all day, we're in this little ass cell block. I have definitely seen guys while locked up get to fighting because of just how bad one guy smells. I'm telling you, when you're locked up, guys will fight over anything. But even with that being said, having bad hygiene is almost like being disrespectful in prison. And respect is one of the key things that you must have in an effort to try to make it through any time that you must serve in one piece. And you know, here's something else that's really crazy to think about. I've been to a lot of different prisons. And at some prisons, they actually have what's referred to as like a weight pile or a weight pit. And this is where the free weights are at certain facilities. Meaning the dumbbells, the barbells, weight benches, squat racks, all sorts of stuff. And at other facilities, they may not have free weights. They may only have universal machines, which is where you put the pin in and you pull down on the cables. And the reason some prisons may have universal weights versus the free weights is definitely because of the violence. In fact, I have heard so many nightmare type stories of fights breaking out on a weight pile or weight pit where one prisoner actually takes a weight and uses that to beat the shit out of another prisoner. And though throughout all of the time that I served, I have never seen a prisoner actually get hit with a weight. I did, however, see what I thought was an attempt at a prisoner to pick up a weight and use that to attack another prisoner with. Now, mind you, I say what I thought was an attempt. And with that, I mean that he never actually succeeded in doing so because the other prisoner who he was arguing with moments before this guy went to actually try to pick up this weight, well, he certainly saw this guy walk over and try to pick up this weight. And no sooner did he see this guy walk over there and pick up this weight, he literally ran from the bench that he was doing his bench press workout on. He ran from this bench and literally jumped up in the air and Ayah! Bruce Lee kicked this dude square in the face and then commenced to beat the shit out of this guy right there on the weight pile. I am actually seeing this happen as I'm curling my little 15 pound dumbbells. Those damn things were heavy. But I am actually watching this go down where this fight began with this one prisoner picking up this weight and then this other guy seeing this, running across the weight pile, jumping up in the air like Bruce Lee and kicking this guy square in the face before then going to town and just commencing to beating the shit out of this guy. And I'm thinking to myself as I'm watching this, I have never before seen anyone jump that high to kick someone before in my life. But a lot of violence in prison does take place on weight piles, which is a major reason why prisons these days are actually getting rid of free weights, either moving to universal machines where prisoners can't get access to the actual weights, which doesn't make much more sense to me either because of the fact that prisoners can actually go use their prison ID, hand it to the guard and say, hey, I need the pull down bar for the weight machine out back. And then they're handed this long metal pull which is basically like a fucking 20 pound baseball bat. A hell of a lot easier to swing in my own opinion than an actual fucking weight. But you know, there are a lot of prisons that don't have either free weights or even universal machines at all. And it's because of the violence. They feel that if they don't have these weights or these weight machines, well then that's at least one less likely weapon prisoners will use if ever a fight does erupt. And with the fact that a lot of prisons don't have any sort of weights for prisoners to use, well prisoners are then basically only left with one alternative, and that's calisthenics. Push-ups, 
crunches, dips, and maybe some sort of weight bag that they concoct from either a trash bag full of water or a pillowcase full of books and magazines and running. You know, I've met guys while locked up that will actually spend the entire rec period running. At every single prison that has a rec yard, there's usually some sort of track right there inside of the fence that prisoners use to run around. And at some places, you can be a rec for like two or three hours at a time. And I have met guys that will spend the entire time at rec running around that track. I know guys while in prison that were running like 20 plus miles a day. These guys were in like the best damn shape of anyone I had ever seen. And to think about doing that in a place where you are definitely not going to be eating the most nutritional balanced diet possible, it takes some serious dedication to not only be able to maintain that workout, but to also go so damn hard with it. And you know, it's me thinking about that right now, thinking about all of the people that I met while in prison who didn't let anything stand in their way in an attempt to get themselves in shape. I think about those type of individuals right now who no matter what, worked out and got in shape. And if they can do it in a situation as bad and miserable as being in fucking prison, then anyone, including myself, should be able to do that out here in the free world. There is one more little story that I wanna tell you about in relation to prison fitness and also about a guy that I haven't had a chance to introduce you guys to just yet. But this guy went by the nickname of Bath Salt. You know, like the stuff that you put in your tubs and I guess the stuff that people do for drugs. And I'm not really even sure how you do bath salts. I don't know if you eat it, do you smoke it, do you snort it? Like I have no idea about anything in relation to this drug. But this guy that I met while at the last prison that I was at by the nickname of bath salt, well, this was actually this guy's drug of choice while he was out in the free world. And this guy, Bath Salt, he was a young guy. He was probably in like his mid-twenties, was actually in college, going to college to be a fucking doctor. Not a nurse, not an RN, not anything like that. This guy was actually going to uh, doctor school. I'm not exactly sure what you call it. Medical school? Yeah, this guy was going to be a fucking doctor. But instead of actually becoming Doogie Hauser, this guy actually got involved with these drugs, this drug bath salt to be specific. And again, I had no idea about anything dealing with this drug, but meeting this guy in prison after however long he was using this drug for, this drug literally uh, made this guy dumber than a motherfucker. That's the best way that I can put it. To imagine a guy who's going to school to be a doctor, this guy's in medical school, med school, whatever you call it. To imagine a person going to school to be a doctor and then to meet them in prison after they tell you that their nickname is Bath Soul and that they got wrapped up in this drug and to just listen to this person talk to you like, hey Guerrero, what's up? You were gonna be a doctor? Yeah, man, but I messed it all up messing with the bath salts. Yeah, I can tell. And I don't want to make it sound like this guy was a bad person. He got wrapped up in drugs. These drugs definitely messed his life up, probably messed his mind up, his head up. They messed him up bad. But overall, this guy, he wasn't that bad of a guy. And I did have a lot of respect for this guy because of how dedicated he was to trying in some way, some form and fashion, to get himself back together. And one of the main ways that he was doing that was through actually working out. And just like the people that I mentioned earlier who would spend two or three hours jogging 20 plus miles a day, this guy was pretty close to doing that himself. This guy worked out compulsively every single day. Rain, snow, 100 plus degrees outside, it did not matter. This guy was outside running. In fact, this guy actually told me one time why he wanted to get back in shape, and it was because of the fact that he thought he was fat when he got locked up, and when he did get locked up at first, he was in the jail. He was eating a bunch of Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams, honey buns, oatmeal cakes, Snickers that were left on his pillow. Yeah, he said he became a fat boy, and he didn't want to be that type of a person anymore. So every day, every wreck opportunity that we had, every time they popped those back doors open, and we were allowed out on the rec yard, I would be playing soccer or basketball or working out myself and I would see this guy bath salt running around this track the entire fucking wreck period. In fact this guy got so in shape that he actually started to look kind of sickly. Like I don't know if that actually makes sense or not but this guy's stomach was actually like sucked in and I used to kind of make fun of him sometimes and say hey look man you know you really can eat things. It's not bad to like eat a freaking ramen noodle every once in a while. 
Because the way you look right now, yeah, you are in shape. You definitely have a lot more wind and stamina than probably most of the people here at this prison. But do. You look like you're sticking your fucking finger down your throat. Eat a ramen noodle. Bass Salt really was a good dude. But he was also really messed up from this drug that he did for however long that he did it for. But regardless, I give him a lot of credit for at least taking the initiative to try to do everything that he possibly could to get himself back together. And you know, now that I think about it, I'm sure this guy is actually home from prison now. And I really do just kind of wonder, like, how good is he doing out there? And with that, I think I'm actually going to try to look this guy up and see if I can find him. And I hope if I do find him, well, I hope he is doing good out here. Hey, look, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about it. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world, never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace!